know that historically also there was a lot of wildlife trade going on. That time probably it was not illegal. At that time the, the in, uh, Wildlife Protection Act came into force only in 1972 when uh, um, poaching and uh, trafficking became illegal. But at that time while even it was prior it was going on, this sort of uh, trafficking was going on, it has become very huge, the magnitude is very huge now and that is what is actually decimating populations, ex especially endangered populations which are as it is small in number in the beginning. The type of tiger uh, skins that are being traded, sometimes we come to know the ones that are being unearthed, but we do not know exactly what is the magnitude of it because much of it is not even coming to the attention of enforcement agencies. The pangolin, I do not know if anyone has uh, heard about pangolins here, but probably this is a very beautiful small uh, uh, creature which uh, actually is, has scales all over its body. And uh, it is now one of the most traded, illegally traded animals. And it is traded because of its scales. The scales are removed and it is shiny, so it is used for ornamentation. And also for the Chinese medicines, which use almost uh, Chinese and other uh, such uh, Southeast Asian countries, where they use it for a lot of their, uh, their uh, traditional uh, medicines, actually. And the, uh, once the body of the pangolin is stripped of the scales, it's, uh, the meat, meat is also used for food. So this is how this is one of the largest smuggling that is going on. And India is a source country. Uh, uh, okay, let me just say that this is another thing, the star tortoise. The star tortoise is actually used in the pet industry. Now, if you look at our uh, country, most of the star tortoise is actually coming from Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh and that they are in the dry belt. And there is a system that has been organized which takes all these star tortoises and takes them to the northeast. And from the northeast they are exported outside, they are illegally taken outside the country. And they are used in the pet trade. So as I am just telling you, we can understand there is actually a full system that is involved. I am sure that it is not a small person who goes and catches a few tortoises who is indulging in this trade. There must be some person who is a kingpin, a person of one or two, three people who are actually fueling this trade, who are having this whole system organized, wherein some poacher goes and catches these animals. It is then taken into consignments and taken across the country to the northeast from where it is going. From there, it is again taken in this, uh, to uh, various other countries outside India. I say that especially that when I was in the ministry, we used to get a lot of these calls telling that a consignment of so many star tortoises have been caught in Malaysia or in Indonesia and we would send our staff to pick it and bring it back and put it in the zoo. So therefore, it is a very well known fact that actually it is going out, going to some other country and then most of it actually ends up in the USA where they are using it as pets because this is very low maintenance, it does not bite, does not do anything, looks pretty and that is what, you just give it a cabbage leaf once in three days and it is fine, do not even need to give it water. So that is what and they must be buying it at exorbitant rates. So just see that the whole system is there, that of the poacher going, getting it organized and finally reaching a person who is giving huge money. So someone is really benefiting financially from this trade. And that just shows that if we could intervene at any point, probably we would be able to stop this sort of trade, which would stop depletion of our wildlife and also would actually disrupt these financial transactions that are taking place. And that actually would be a very big thing because right now, as I told you, we in the forest department just go and catch one particular person who is doing the smuggling. That is the uh, some sort of a like a horse he is, you know, and he is uh, the person being caught and we are not actually, and they can be easily replaced. So many can be replaced by many more to go and do that work because that is small amount of money, there is poverty, you can employ them. But none of us actually reach the top person, none of us are actually dismantling the whole trade that is happening and the whole financial racket that is happening and that is the problem. Probably if we want to become effective against illegal wildlife trade, that is what we need to do. We need to look at it from a financial aspect and actually dismantle these type of trade networks and then we would have impact and we would also, we would have a two pronged effect. One is we would save our species, save our nature and also not allow that sort of illegal activity 
which is being financed other illegal uh, uh, activities such as terrorism, such as uh, drugs as and other such things to be fueled by this sort of wildlife that is happening.